Terry, I kind of want to get into this. Pistons played Sunday. Took a, a, another ugly loss to the Suns after a loss to the Pelicans and the Blazers. And I was scrolling. I was going through Twitter. And actually, Chris Platt sent, sent me this. Shout out to the heavyweights. And ESPN, Brian Windhorst. They had an interesting conversation. They were kind of talking about the Pistons a little bit, just recapping the game. And JB, if you can pull it up, this is what they had to say. It's about a minute long, but it's gold. It's about when I mentioned it. Portland had a 94% chance to win. It was big. It was impressive watching it. Just the, just the, the points just ticked off. <laughs> Before great. we move on from this uh, Detroit-Phoenix uh, game, yeah. I just want to say so. I was talking to a scout who was watching the uh, uh, Pistons within the last few days. and he told me that Cade Cunningham is the best guard on the Pistons roster. That's not breaking news. And that Marcus Sasser, who's their first round pick out of Houston, they picked him with the 25th pick. Mm -hmm. He said he's their second best guard. It's interesting. Does he, Asar Thompson is a forward? Yeah. Yeah. Marcus Sasser has been good. It would be great if Monty Williams would start him and take Killian Hayes and punt him to the moon because he stinks. Oh God. Instead he's starting Hayes hate. God, not man. it's not hate. He's ab, he's ab, objectively one of the worst players in basketball, and he's Listen, starting over a lottery pick and over Marcus Sasser also, who's also good. The last right, time I don't think I don't think uh, Jaden Ivey didn't play in this game because yeah, he, he was sick. Let's unpack there. Punning, killing Hayes of the moon, maybe a little extreme, but I can't say you're far no, off. No, I, I can't it, say it's it far is, off. It is not extreme. They <laughs> they need to find a rocket ship, put him on it. And send him to the moon. Send Mars, him. Ja- I don't care where they send him. <laughs> but see, I, I need help from you young guys here. Okay. Because every time I talk about Sil- Killian Hayes, I said, man, this guy sucks. And then I talk to you young guys, well, T, he's not that bad. You know, he passes well. And he Good can defense. Play well the defense. And you guys get all cute. And I don't know what's going on. I don't I don't get this Killian Hayes thing. Yeah, I don't either. We A lot of the guys from Woodward, we went to that Pistons in Chicago game where it was a win for the Pistons. But DeMar DeRozan at 20 and Zach Levine at 50. Killian Hayes was getting cooked defensively that whole game. And that was against the Bulls. I know Levine and DeRozan are some actual ballers now. I'm not saying that. But if you're leaning on this defensive strength, it's, it just doesn't make sense. But the thing that stuck out to me, and Stick brought this up on the morning show, it's really what stuck out to me even more. They said Sasser's the second best guard. They didn't name one Jaden Ivey. Now, Ivey was out against the Suns. He had an illness. But does this speak anything to you about more so? Does this? I should say this. Does it speak to you? This more about Sasser or Ivy to you? Um, I don't believe Sasser is the second best guard. I th- Jaden Ivy is, and maybe maybe the scout said that because he didn't see Jaden Ivy play. But I I think Jaden Ivy is perhaps not doing something that uh, Monty w- wants him to do. Right, and he's being punished until he gets something, whether it's defense or whether it's. Uh, knowing where to be on the floor. There's something he's not doing that he's being punished for. Mm-hmm. This is not a Killing Hayes is better than Jaden Ivey. This is not a Sasser is better than Ivey thing. Um, perhaps when you look at the – what was the game that they just won? Uh, Chicago. The Chicago game. Mm-hmm. He came in – no, 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 no. Let's go back to New Orleans. Okay. They lost to New Orleans, but he came in, and he provided a spark in the second half. Absolutely. Then they sat his ass down again. Mm-hmm. I didn't get that. No, and especially when I, – I get the defensive argument for Killian Hayes, and Flano, I want to get your input on this, but when you have Kate Cunningham, Asar Thompson, Jalen Dern, Isaiah Stewart, I feel like that's a strong defensive unit. Am I wrong? No, you most you're definitely not wrong on that one. And to me, it's always been with Killian Hayes, and a lot of people don't like when I say this, but I just always have to include this in every Killian Hayes argument. In each of his first three seasons in the NBA, he has not shot over 40% from the floor or 30% from three. And this season, he has picked up right where he has left off, shooting 33% from the floor and 29% from three. Even if you do provide something defensively or even with playmaking or whatever, you're still a detriment to your team when you're shooting that that poorly continuously he has never shown that it's going to get better at least in terms of a whole season sample size I'm tired of it yeah and you look at Asar Thompson I believe he had a nice like at least a shooting performance compared to bounce back I believe he was shooting like one for six or something the game beforehand against New Orleans and he had 14 points um I'll have to look I don't think he had a double double but he definitely had a bounce back performance it's, Terry has your what's your so far I believe what six seven games to the season yeah. What What's your assessment of Asar Thompson so far? Uh, he can't shoot. 
mm-hmm. but that's not what you have in the lineup. I I like him as a player because he's providing energy and he's providing uh, some defense and hustle, which this team needs. Now, um, I'd much rather have him in the starting lineup than Killian Hayes, who Thank does God. nothing. He doesn't even defend that well. But at least I saw Thompson defends. He can rebound a little bit. He can get the outlet pass out. So he's functional. Mm-hmm. He helps you become a real team. Uh, this whole Killian Hayes thing, this is two coaches that have tell, told us this guy belongs on the floor. Dude, if it was me, he'd be the – He'd be uh, playing uh, what were they the Motor City Cruise? The Motor City, Motor Cruise. City Cruise, yeah, shout out. <laughs> He'd be playing at Wayne State. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> no, he has been brutal, and that's just I I I love the Monty hire, but that's the one thing where it's just it's not clicking with me. Where it's like I I know we're we're watching the same game. Mm-hmm. What's missing? Uh, do you think when they bring back when when Monte Morris comes back, when Bogey comes back? Do you think, and when Alex Burks is healthy, he's probably going to stay on the bench, I would assume, unless they're going to bump him up, which I'm not complaining about. I just don't see it happening. Do you see either of those guys potentially starting in front of Killian? Yeah, I, I, you know, they could bring back uh, Chuck Nevitt, and I would start him in guard <laughs> over Killian Hayes. It doesn't matter. But, I, you know, this whole thing, my, this is my theory, this is – Nothing in concrete, but this whole, I think they're punishing Jay Nivey for something. It almost feels that way. He, like, he's the number five overall pick, and he had a tremendous, not, I'm not going to say tremendous, but he had a very solid, promising rookie season. Right. And when he's coming off the bench right now, like, to your point, he brings that extra spark. Right. And he did it without Cade Cunningham. He should be better with Cade Cunningham on the floor. Mm-hmm. If Cade is what everybody around here says he is. Now, um, at some point, I think Monty is going to look and say, hey, look, this isn't working. They're, 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 they, want, they have aspirations to be in the playing game. And then when it comes to a point when they're 4-20 and 20 and out of it, maybe he'll say, hey, you know what, uh, Jaden, here's what I want you to do. Can you do this? We're putting you back in the starting lineup. Or we're playing you ahead of this thing called Killian. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> you know what? Not, not only, even, here, this thing. No, there, no, there, 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 there is something about Killing that I like. Which is? He's got great hair. <laughs> he, he is a good-looking individual. Yes. He can, he can pull off the NBA player looks. Right. Looks like an NBA player. He's a pretty boy, but pretty boys can't always play. Uh, obviously, this one cannot. This <laughs> one cannot. But then they play they play the Warriors tonight? Yeah. Oh. And this this is a rough. They got the Warriors, and who else do they have? Flannel. They have at Milwaukee, and then home versus Philadelphia. Oh, I feel like there's another one too. That's yeah. tough. I I want to say they're the one after that is at Chicago. I could be wrong. Let's hope. Let's hope. And let's hope Levine doesn't go for fifty this time well, either. And even going into Chicago, that's tough. Like like who do the who do the Pistons think they are to even be favored on the road against a Bulls team that's more I would say seasonally talented but not good. Yeah, but my whole thinking is like Levine went off for fifty. DeRozan still got his. Vucevic wasn't completely quiet. Like I feel like that was the Bulls' best effort. And I don't. I mean, do you think that was the Pistons' best effort as well? Yeah. Like, do you think so far? Yeah. I mean, so far, yeah. It probably has been the best game. That was a great game to go to. So I was I'm so glad. happy after bets, that game. Bet smacked. Mm. Run out there with parlays, but Terry, when you when you see like, for example, the Warriors coming in town, or I think we're actually in Golden State. When <clears throat> when you see that, like, what is like the next step for when you get not even to win this game, but just to not know that okay, this is an instant like no chance. Like, what needs to happen in this game? Well, see, I don't look at when West Coast teams come out the East. I don't. I never look at a home game as a you can't win this game. Uh, what point of this East Coast trip are they on? If it's like their last game. Pistons probably would win that game. It's the if it's the fourth out of five or something, mm-hmm. it's a toss up. Um, so I don't look at it that way, uh, unless the Warriors absolutely have to win something early in the season, and they're never in that position because they're so good. They know they don't have to win the game in Detroit. But um, the NBA is it has so many league games, and league games or league league losses mm-hmm. are games. Where you're going to lose no matter what. Yeah, eventually. Th- I mean, that's what it felt like. I mean, I know it's from a Pistons standpoint, but that loss in New Orleans was just brutal. Sure. No Brandon Ingram, no Zion. Those are the games that I think we were so happy after the Chicago win. And you go into even the Blazers. Mm-hmm. The Blazers game hurt, too, because those are games like, at this point, do we have expectations almost too high until we see a proven product right now, you think? 
and it, well, the expectations aren't even high. We're, we're asking for 30 games, I can't, which I still think is possible. I can't have Troy Weaver have another 20-some win season in year four. I just need to see improvement. I'm not asking for the playoffs. I'm asking for 30 wins. Is that an arbitrary number? Maybe, but at some point, when is it okay to criticize him? That's all I'm saying. Uh, how about now? I, I agree with <laughs> you. I, I agree with you. He's playing Killian Hayes. <laughs> Enough said. We don't have to go any further. <laughs> Do you think that's more of a Troy Weaver thing or a Monty thing? No, I. You know, once again, I think Monty. I mean, he's the coach. He mm -hmm. can do what he wants. But once again, I think he sees greatness out of Jalen Ivy. But he's not going to play him until he does things he wants him to do. Mm -hmm. um, this to me is not an issue of who's the most talented. Jaden Ivy is way more talented than Killian Hayes. Y'all, y'all feel me on that I one? I mean, absolutely. I, you can keep preaching on that one because there's absolutely. no. I, I couldn't. I don't. I don't know what argument you would have at this point. Like, what is what does Killian do better than Ivy? Defend, I, I guess. I, I mean, defensively. Defend. But even Ivy, he's got in the steal. Like Ivy gets steals at least. Like I think, obviously, Killian's much harder to blow by as far as when with a guard or anything like that. But Ivy, who cares when it's like Killian's not giving? He's giving you goose eggs offensively half the time. Yeah, and I, I do think Killian's better defensively now, but it's not worth – I mean, Jaden Ivey's shooting 40% from three coming off the bench. I know it's a six-game sample size, but still, he's given you that instant offense and that spark, at oh, least so far. Absolutely. But and, we'll be, and you know what? This man pushes the ball down the court. He does. As fast as anybody. Yeah, I wonder if that's also – if he's just going too fast, if he needs to slow down. He's almost panicked because he's coming off the bench. Like He's got to prove himself more almost. That, that, that could be in his head. He's still a young guy, mm -hmm. and – and, you know, when we look at NBA players, a lot of them you know, are insecure. So I'm sure he's asking, you know, what's happening? Yeah, what the, and Javin, his father, been a little, uh, not outspoken, but he's definitely voiced his displeasure with it. And I don't blame him.